Poetry and Expressive Arts, Supporting Resilience Through Poetic Writing by Margot Fuchs-Nill and Sally Atkins. Poetry is increasingly used in therapy, and it already occupies a central place in expressive arts therapies. This book is the first to explicitly combine theory and practice for healing, reconciliation, problem solving, and personal and professional development. It's an essential book for practitioners using an integrative arts-based approach to help clients build resilience and foster sustainable, positive change in their lives. Poetry and Expressive Arts, Supporting Resilience Through Poetic Writing. When you enter the spell of a poem, Come with curiosity and questions. Listen to the songs of words. Listen with your secret ear. Listen for the sounds you cannot hear. There are many ways to claim a meaningful life. The poetic way is one of them. Some people are able to dress sadness in beauty, to find a breath of inspiration in loss and abandonment, and to crystallize tears of despair. Who would not want to join them to make the best of life too short lived anyway? Who would not want to be able to say, yes, I created a trace lighting up as a shooting star. Poetry speaks without explaining, crisscrossing the tangible, allowing our minds and senses to be here while there and encouraging us to give the inconceivable a chance. There, allow your mind to run free. Have the words lounge out capriciously and grace Six a grace in the lingual field. Imagery will appear out of the hazy thoughts, turn bright and sharp, and disperse as the water jet in the wind. Each day can be the last day. Tomorrow will be different for every other day. Sometimes this is how it is. We forget what we know again and again. We remember only fragments and they are terrible. Exhaustion is a presence dark and familiar in the bones, which like ice obscures the deeper flow beneath the frozen surface of the river. Again and again, we remember all the mistakes we have made and every fear for the future. Then we're called to hear praises sung by the dying flowers. 
to walk among falling leaves on a forest path still damp with morning dew and to stand in the presence of trees. We are called to celebrate again the small rituals of daily life, the smell of coffee in a blue cup warming the hands. We are called to relinquish for the moment or for the rest of our lives this hurried way of living. Praise me now. Abe, Abe, Ama, Asha, Mahum, Mahum. I am the one that silently lifts your wandering sight. Praise me now. Bare rocked I am in the penetrating light. Abe, Abe, Amasha, Mahum, Mahum. I house your searching sight that cannot travel into me. Praise me now. Tree green, roofless top. Running waters, Abe, Abe, Amasha, Mahum, Mahum. I am your deep sleeper. Praise me now. The emergence of a poem. It is late. And the words are tired. The poem got stuck in the traffic jam of the alphabet. Too many A's ran for the first line and the B's fainted. The C's stumbled over with self righteous ease and the ease jealously looked down on the slim F's. It is late for our world and too many words are overused and stressed. Let's reinvent the alphabet, allowing each letter to stand on its own. Especially in spring. Listen, the world resists our best designs. What is alive? blues and white stars on a green carpet. What is alive dissolves the flatness of our language. What is alive wants to crawl out of all the little boxes we have made with words. And the poem speaks back. Each poem has a voice, a voice other than our voice, a voice we cannot take for granted, a conjuring and banning voice, praising and lamenting, describing the questioning and questioning the quest and the questioning the described the voice of the poem 
This verse speaks up, chants, recites, raps, or pleas. Matter and the translucent, the sensory and the ungraspable, the mundane and its enchanted sphere. Speak the poem for its own sake. Speak it repeatedly. Embody it. The poem lends you its other voice to find your own voice, your own other voice. There are languages older than words and another law older and truer than anything written down. Circling of dark wings, they find death in the snow and know the place. These are birds we measure our lives by. They are not quiet or sweet, these birds. They eat the dead and stay alive. They know how the world changes. They participate. Their sharp-beaked practice, an ecology of grace, picking clean the bones, an act of tenderness. Let us be what we are. Let us be what we are, uniquely imperfect, like wild plants, flourishing weeds, useless and indispensable, freed from perfection. Love you, my most beloved, may you be forbearing and gentle all hours under the rainbow of the alphabets. If love would not have me, I would become wood washed ashore. Love you, my most beloved, all ours. May you stand firm without fury or boasting, without going after or resting in injustice. If love would not have me, I would become wood washed ashore. Love, you, my most beloved, remain for now all ours. Love that passes with me rises and from now on tunes the swing of time. Love, you, my most beloved, in your mysterious contours, all ours, from face to face. Poetry and Expressive Arts, Supporting Resilience Through Poetic Writing by Margot Fuchs-Nill and Sally Atkins.